Welcome to my channel, aim enjoy. I will make you enjoy the best horror stories ever and on a daily basis. So make sure to click on the subscribe button and let's enjoy. The epidemic was all over the news and soon the entire nation was in mass panic. Looting and riots took place, cities were left in ruins and the infection claimed more and more people. Within 48 hours, the entire planet was overrun by zombies. Earth was a dead planet. I was at home when it happened. I was sitting on my couch watching TV when my show was interrupted by a news bulletin. I didn't think much of it until I saw the news anchor's face. I saw genuine fear. But of what? The news anchor spoke. The nation is in mass panic as an unknown infection is turning people into zombies. It's recommended that you remain in your home until further instruction. Remain in your home, I thought to myself. I'm a sitting duck here. I had to get out of here and get to somewhere safer. I went upstairs, got my revolver and some food, then made my way outside. When I opened the door, I saw what was left of my neighborhood. Houses on fire, cars smashed into each other, and bodies strung across the ground. I looked in horror as the bodies got up and charged at me. Zombies. I fear no man, but this might be an exception. I pointed my revolver at one of the zombies and planted a bullet between their eyes. The zombie's skull exploded from the force and it fell to the ground. The zombies then gathered around the corpse and feasted on its flesh. While they were distracted, I made a run for my car and drove out of there faster than you can say they're coming to get you, Barbara. As I headed toward town, I began to see more and more of those freaks running amok. However, it was even worse downtown. The city was in shambles and zombies were everywhere. I watched in horror as several of them held down a young girl and tore her limb from limb as they feasted on her entrails. I nearly vomited in disgust. But I kept going. I saw more and more people get eaten or turn as I drove further into town. Eventually, I arrived at the local department store. I knew that if I was going to survive this, I need supplies. I grabbed my shotgun and went inside. Inside, it was a complete madhouse. Shelves were toppled over, carts were sprawled everywhere, and worst of all, they were out of Sprite. I headed to the food section and stocked up on bottled water, beef jerky, and power bars. Then I went to the sports section to grab a hunting rifle, a machete, and some ammo. I had to be ready to fight for my life and something told me a revolver wasn't going to cut it. I left the department store and drove out of town. I figured my odds were better in a less populated area. But as I reached the highway, I saw that the roads were blocked off by abandoned cars and an electric fence. It looked like I was on foot from here. I loaded my supplies into my backpack, loaded my new rifle, and stepped out of my car. The smell of decomposed flesh was in the air. I knew what that meant. I turned around to see that I'd been followed by more of those zombies. My rifle was loaded and my revolver was in its holster. I was ready for action. The zombies charged. Wasting no time, I pointed my rifle and shot the nearest one. The bullet went through its head and then through the zombie behind it. Both zombies fell back, nothing more than lifeless husks. Two more zombies rushed toward me. I unsheathed my machete and sliced their heads clean off. The metallic smell of blood filled the air. I sheathed my machete and continued on my way. I have to admit, walking down the highway all alone, knowing that danger looked at every turn, was terrifying. But I've learned to repress my fear. I was on a mission to find out just what the hell was going on. After a couple hours of walking, I realized the sun was going down. Adrenaline rushed through my veins. My palms had become sweaty. I was scared. I knew that I wouldn't stand a chance against those things in the dark. 
Then, as I stopped walking, I could hear the faint sound of growling behind me. I knew I had some time before those bastards got to me, so I made a run for it. Thank God I was a champion runner in college. I ran into the nearby forest where I discovered an abandoned house close by and made a break for it. I ran inside and locked the door behind me. I was safe. For now. The house was a mess, windows broken, furniture tipped over. Whoever lived here left in a hurry. But since no one was there, I made myself at home. Knowing that I could have been followed, I gathered some wooden nails from the garage and boarded up all the doors and windows, which didn't take long because it was a single story house. Then came nightfall, and I was ready for them. I looked out the window, waiting, but no one came. I must have lost them in the woods. I sighed in relief and decided to hit the hay. The next morning, I gathered my things and left immediately. I had to know who was behind this. I walked through the woods and came back to the highway, where I found an abandoned truck with the keys left inside. There was still plenty of fuel left. I fired it up and drove off, hoping to find survivors. I drove for hours and didn't find one. Was I the only person left? As I pondered the idea of being the last man on earth, I realized that I'd made my way to the city. I had to check it out. Rifle in hand, I stepped out of the truck and went to look around. The once densely populated city of Baltimore was now completely deserted. Buildings were partially demolished, cars were left abandoned on the roads, and the ground was littered with rotting corpses. I eventually found the city hospital. I figured maybe they might have a few clues on this disease. The glass doors were shattered, so I just stepped inside. The same smell of rotting flesh welcomed me as I went in. Like the rest of the city, the hospital was deserted. Windows were smashed, syringes on the floor, and there were lab coats with blood stains on them. Something in my gut told me I was going to find out where that blood came from. After exploring for a while, I came across a door with a biohazard symbol. The area was under quarantine. I looked through the window of the door and saw nothing. Then out of nowhere, a bloody hand hit the window. I jumped back in fright. Another zombie. I looked through the window again to see the room was filled with them. I was overwhelmed with questions. Was it this disease? Where did it come from? Is it airborne? Whatever this disease was, I wasn't infected. And I was not about to change that, so I got the hell out of there and ran back to the truck. As I got closer, I realized that I was surrounded by those freaks. It looked like I was going to have to fight my way out. I unsheathed my machete and cut those bastards down to size. As more zombies came at me, I quickly got into the truck and drove out of there. I was all alone. Everyone else was either infected, dead, or both. But why? Why me? Why was I the sole survivor? As these questions came up, I grew more and more depressed. Everyone I knew and loved, they were all dead. My friends, my family, are gone. I will never see them again. I remembered going places with my family, unaware of what would happen later on. Now, I was the only one left. Now, I was the last man on earth. The entire human race ended with me. A few hours later, I came across an abandoned farmhouse. I thought it was as good a place as any to spend the night. I gathered my things and went inside, locking the door behind me. I then went to work boarding up the doors and windows. After about 20 minutes, the house was secure and I was ready for them. By nightfall, I could hear them outside moaning as they approached. I readied my hunting rifle. Everything went quiet. Suddenly, I could hear them violently banging on the door. 
That door is pretty old, I thought. It won't hold them forever. Knowing this, I realized the only place I had to hide was the basement. I lifted open the basement door and climbed down. I sat there in silence. And then the door finally broke open. They were inside. I prayed to the Heavenly Father himself that they wouldn't think to pull on the trap door to the basement. To my surprise, they lost interest and wandered away. I was safe for now. And in the basement, I discovered an old blank journal. I figured I'd document the details of my survival. I plan to leave this journal where hopefully, if there are still people out there, someone will find it. But instead, I simply wrote this. If you're reading this, know that you are not alone. I've survived this ordeal using my strength and wits. I can't tell you where I am or where I'm going. But I'll say this. These things are unstoppable. Do not try to fight them. I barely escaped with my life. Your best bet is to simply run and hide. Do this and maybe, just maybe, you'll survive.